Now, let's start with learning brand diagrams, which is a visual tool used to show the relationships between different sets by depicting them as overlapping circles. Each circle represents a set, and the overlapping regions represent elements that are common to multiple sets. The key components of a Venn diagram are the following. Circle. Every circle in the Venn diagram might represent a set. You can see set A represented by the area in blue, and then now set B represented by the area in yellow. The circle contains all elements that belong to that particular set. The overlapping area refers to area where the circle overlap. There are elements that are common to the overlapping parts. For example, you can see in this Venn diagram with two sets. The overlap area refers to elements that are in both set A and set B. The part of the circle that below overlap with any other circle represent elements that are unique to that particular set. For example, here you could see that 22 elements are unique to set A. Lastly, you have the universal set, which is the rectangle or space around the circle representing the universal set. And this includes all possible elements under consideration in that context. In this Venn diagram above, you can see that the universal set refers to all the students in the class. Set A refers to students who study history. Set B refers to students who study geography. For the Venn diagram, you could say that 22 students study history only. 23 students study geography only. 15 students study both history and geography and 12 students do not study either history or geography. Now, let's start doing some exercise to get us familiarized with Venn diagram. Question 1. Set A and set B have no common elements. How can we draw set A and set B in the space provided on the right side? You can see the universal set containing the big rectangle box. Now, you can start by drawing set A, which is a circle, and then you can draw another circle, set B. To ensure that they have no common elements, set A and set B must not have any overlapping areas. This question, set A and set B have common elements. This is also easy. Based on the diagram earlier on, you could simply either move A to touch set B or set B to touch A. This way, they will have open overlapping areas, which means that they have common elements. Now, how do we draw a void diagram such that set A is a proper subset of set B? Remember the definition of a proper subset? A proper subset occurs when every element of set A is also an element of set B, but the two sets are not equal. In other words, set A is completely contained within set B, and set A is definitely smaller than set B. Therefore, you could draw a circle to represent set A, and you could draw a bigger circle to represent set B. And in order to show that set A is a proper subset of set B, you have to move the circle representing set A to be within the circle representing set B. Now, how do we identify the area where it is the complement of set A, where set A is a proper subset of set B? So using the diagram above, now you have to identify the complement of set A. Remember the complement of set A is all the areas that are not inside set A. This means you can just simply shade all the area outside the yellow circle. Now let's talk about the concept of the unions of sets. When we take the union of two or more sets, we are creating a new set that contains all the elements from the respective individual sets. 
Formally, the union of two sets A and B is a set of all elements that are in A or B. We write this as A union B, which means that we are combining the elements for both sets. For example, if we have A equal to a set of 1, 2, 3, and B equal to the set of 3, 4, 5, the union of set A and B will be the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice that the number 3 appears in both sets, but in the union, we only list it once because there are no duplicates in sets. It is also important to remember that in sets, order does not matter. Whether we write the element as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the sets are still equal because what matters is the collection of elements, not the sequence. Remember the library analogy we were using all along? Imagine we have two sections in the library, session A, which is the set of science fiction books, and section B, which is the set of mystery books. The union of these two sets will be a new set that contains all the books on the science fiction and mystery section without any duplicates. Imagine this as a big combined shelf that has every book from the either science fiction genre or the mystery genre. Now let's move on to the intersection of sets, an important concept in set theory. The intersection of two or more sets is a set that contains only the elements that are common to all the sets. In simple terms, it's a set of items that appear in every set involved. Formally, the intersection of two sets A and B is written as A intersect B, and it includes all elements that are in both A and B. For example, let's consider two sets where A representing the science fiction book containing the set 1, 2, and 3, and B containing the set 3, 4, and 5 representing mystery books. The intersection of these two sets A intersect B will include only the books that appear in both categories. In this case, the common element is 3. So A intersect B gives you a set of only one element, 3. It's also possible for sets to have no elements in common. In that case, the intersection is called an empty set. Let's move on to some practice questions for the Venn diagram. Imagine you have a universal set representing all the books in the library. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let A equal to 1, 2, 3 representing the science fiction books. What is the complement of set A? Pause the video and try to tackle this question yourself. Now, recall the definition of complement. The complement of a set A refers to all the elements in the universal set that are not in A. In other words, everything that is not inside the circle A. So you could see that elements 4, 5, and 6 are outside of the circle A and are still inside the universal set. So the complement of set A is a set containing 4, 5, and 6.